Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in for today's talk and our prayer is today that this talk will encourage you and that God will speak to you through it. And I do want to say you got to subscribe to this YouTube channel right now if you want to see more stuff like this, all the latest content coming out. And also, don't forget, check out our website, myhopecity.cc and connect with us on Facebook by liking our page, Hope City Efton, and joining our Facebook groups. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to see how God is going to speak to you through this talk. We've walked through this series, and if you're just joining us, uh, maybe evident by the little skit, we sort of take in the Christmas Carol, uh, Charles Dickens, uh, Scrooge, and just sort of looked at, you know, let, let's talk about our, our past and our present, and today we're going to talk about our future. And uh, we've said it like this throughout the series, that God wants to get you out of the past and into the present, looking toward the future. God wants to get you out of the past and into the present looking toward the future. And our go-to verse we started, as we started each lesson is in Titus chapter 3. Verse 3 to 7. Some of you might be able to almost quote it now after our three weeks together. But it says this. At one time you two were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Someone say eternal life. God, I thank you one more time for this day and the chance we can have to just come together in this room and many rooms throughout this region and around the world. And God, I just pray that you would be with us today. God, I ask for your anointing on my life as I share in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. I want you to know today, and really it's been evident as we have walked through the last couple weeks, that, that if you are here today, that you have a future in this life through Jesus. You have a future in this life through Jesus. I, I love that about Jesus. I, I love that about the new birth we have in Jesus Christ, that, that it doesn't matter your past, it doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter your background, that through Jesus Christ, you have a future in this life. Isn't it awesome when you get to the point where you just recognize, like, I, I've been created by God and for God. Like, I'm created in the image of God, and, and it's pretty awesome when you get to the place in your life that you realize, like, wow, like, the, the very one who made me has a plan and a purpose for my life. That, that he really, really does. And I'm so thankful that through him and as we now live our life and the more we surrender to God and his will, we start to live out the purpose God has for our life here and now. You can look through the Christmas story and, and even just people that we read about it around the birth of Jesus. I mean, for Mary, it was obviously she would carry the Christ child and, and just obviously living a life that was surrendered to the plan of God and the purpose of God for her life. And I was thinking about Joseph. I, I mean, Joseph, he, here's a guy who had some questions and some misunderstandings at, at first when he finds out Mary's pregnant and, and, and is like, I'm not sure, I don't want to do this, but, but God lets him know through an angel that this is my plan for your life. And, and, and he surrendered his will to the will of God and lived out his purpose in this life. I mean, for the wise men, they see the star and they will travel to find this Christ child. And for the shepherds, the angel appears and they would go and worship him. And there's something amazing and wonderful when you get to the place that you realize God has a plan and a purpose for your life. That he has a future here and now, but I, I want to talk to you about even more and, and go a little deeper because a lot of us, we look at sort of life is life. Like life is what I have here and now. Life is 
you know, maybe if I live to be 55, that's my life, or I, I live to be 85, that's my life. What, whatever it is, we, we sort of look at that. And how many have ever heard this phrase before? You, you only live once. Is there anyone that ever, ever heard that phrase? I, I, a lot of times it would be in the context of, you know, enjoy life and, and just go and have fun. Like you only live once, like ju- just have a great time. Or, or you could apply it in, in another way that, you know, make the most of your life. You only live once. But you know what? According to the Bible, according to Jesus, you only live twice. According to the Bible, according to Jesus, you live twice. That your future is not just the few years that you have on earth. The Bible would actually say the time that we have on earth is extremely short extremely extremely short and and the longer we even live in this life we start to realize wow it is short like the longer I go it's like man where did the time go and and it just goes so fast so fast and the Bible will teach us that one of the reasons is because we actually live twice how you live your life is important because you only live twice I, I want to do a little teaching today and I want to look at at the Bible because ultimately the Bible would teach us that that we have this life on earth and then we have a, another life or eternal life. The Bible would teach that, that there are two places of eternity. Uh, when you, if you've ever read the Christmas Carol, you ever watched the movies, you'll, you'll see sort of this imagery that, that's going on. That this imagery around eternity and, and, and kind of the, these two options. The Christmas Carol would really show what one, one place of eternity and and that would be what I would call the second life without God. The second life without God, or as the scripture would say, hell. Now, some of us, we have this idea about hell, don't we? Like, you know, depending our upbringing, depending culture. I, sometimes the, the, worst, the worst thoughts we have about hell would, would be like, this is sort of like Satan's lair. Is there anyone that ever kind of in your mind, you sort of picture like, like Satan in his lair and, and this is sort of his, his, you know, place that he comes up with all of his schemes and ideas. Like, like sometimes we think of hell like that. Like, well, that's where, where he just lives and, and, and can come up with all sorts of evil stuff. But no, that's actually not the case. Hell is not where Satan is. But according to the Bible, hell is where Satan will go. Hell is, is a place that, that actually was prepared for Satan and his, his demons. I, I need you to know today that, it, that ultimately it is a place that, that the judgment of God will be revealed. I need you to know today that, that every terrible thing that's ever happened to you, every evil that, that you have ever experienced, everything that, that you would look at your life and say that that's terrible and I never wanted to go through that. And I, I want you to know today, according to scripture, one day ultimately the judgment of God is going to come down and Satan, the enemy of our souls, is going to be cast into hell. God will have his vengeance on what I would say your behalf. L- listen to what some scriptures say about just evidence that hell is a place that's prepared for Satan. John the Revelator, he, he would write these things. God shows him a vision and, and lets him know you need to write these things down. And we, we see this aligned with other scriptures. But this is what he would write in Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. He says, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 25. He said, then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with me, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire. Prepared for who? For the devil and his demons. That, that this place, eternity without God, the second life without God, it, it, it's, it's hell. It's a place prepared for Satan and, and all of his followers. But the Bible will actually go farther. And it actually tells us that hell not only is a place prepared for Satan, but ultimately those that follow after Satan. You say, well, how do you follow after Satan? Well, well, the Bible would teach us those that do not follow after Jesus, those that do not follow the way, those that have not received the grace 
of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, that they too will spend eternity without God. The second life. Now, I, I know some of you are like, it's Christmas time. Like, why are we talking about hell? I, I did not come to church to talk about hell. <laughs> like, wait, wait a minute. Like, this was us. Who signed me up to join today? Like, no, no, thank you. Like, it, you know, it, we, we think that. And, and we're like, you know, they, they, say, they say if you want people to come back to your church, don't talk about hell. <laughs> don't talk about politics and don't talk about giving. I think, and so we probably hit all of them here at some point or another. Uh, but uh, I, I want you to know that a lot of times we look at this subject and we're just like, ah, you know, I, I don't know. And, and like, let, let's just, it's Christmas, let's talk about Jesus. Like, well, do you know who talked about hell more than anyone in the Bible was Jesus. More than anyone else talked about hell, Jesus talked about hell. As a matter of fact, Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven. But the interesting thing is that when Jesus would talk about hell, he wasn't talking to people that didn't know him. He wasn't talking to people that didn't know the way. When he would talk about hell, it wasn't a scare tactic. Because I, I know, some, like I grew up around church. Okay, like, and, and sometimes you would start talking about this subject and it was just like, Oh, I'm so scared, and like after church, I like you know be in the, come to the front of the church, or I'd be you know at home, or go try to go to bed at night, and I'm like, oh God, don't send me to hell, 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 like, like just so scared. But but Jesus, when he talked about hell, it wasn't to people that that weren't following him. He wouldn't bring it up as sort of like follow me, or you're going to spend eternity in hell. That, that wasn't the case. He would very often be talking to his followers, talking to them about the reality of. The second life without God, eternity without God, and, and what it would look like, and, and it would be a result of not following after him, and it was really a motivation for them to live godly lives, and a motivation for them to go and share the good news. You cannot fully understand the grace of God without understanding what he saves you from. I believe this is one reason that Jesus would talk about hell so often. You, you cannot fully understand the grace of God if you don't have a, at least a little understanding of what he ultimately is saving you from. Jesus would describe hell in all of his conversations about the subject. He would describe it as a place of eternal torment, a place of unquenchable fire, the place where the worm does not die, a place where there would be weeping and, and gnashing of teeth. A, a place of absolute, utter darkness. That, that like, you, you couldn't see a hand in front of you. That utter darkness. It, if you actually study at different times that the word that Jesus would use, the word hell, or different places in the Bible, it actually would be a reference, uh, a word picture of an area just outside of Jerusalem. There was an area outside of, of Jerusalem, I believe the, the southern border, and, and, and this was a place that if you study history, you will read about it in Jeremiah, that, that there were some evil kings, and there were some people that got into some pretty messed up stuff, and, and, and at this particular time in history, that, that this valley just to, outside of Jerusalem was actually used as a place, they, they had this huge fire, and part of their worship in, in, in history was actually to come and sacrifice children. They would sacrifice children as worship and, and, and they would throw them in this fire and, and they say history would tell us that this fire continued to burn. And so in Jesus' day, it, it became this place that, that it was a dump. It was a place they would take criminals and throw their dead bodies in. That, that it was just absolutely horrific and just burned and burned and burned. And they say the smell it was actually just horrific. That even days, if the wind just blew a certain way, even in Jerusalem, like you didn't even want to go outside because the, the stench was unbearable. Jesus would use this word picture to kind of show them a little bit of what, what hell would be like. Ultimately, I believe what makes hell, hell, or eternity without God is just that. It's shut out, being shut out from the presence of God. 
2 Thessalonians tells us this. It says, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. The NLT says they'll be separated from the Lord. We, we don't even, we can't in this life begin to even understand or grasp what that might be like. Some of us in our lives, we have had some horrific things happen. We, we've had what we would call hell on earth. Some of us, we, we've been there, but, but we don't understand what it would be like to totally be outside. Jesus would describe it as a place that you could never cross over, to, to be outside of the presence of God. The second life without God, it will be the removal of anything and everything good. The removal of anything and everything good. Jesus tells us this, he says in Matthew 25, he says, They will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. I know today that, that this is hard, but hey, Charles Dickens talked about it, so what we can talk about it, right? I, I, and I know it's hard. And some of us today, we, we come and we're just like, well, I don't know, like Jesus would never, Jesus, I, you know, my Jesus, the one that I've created. I, I already told you, like Jesus talked about hell more than, than he even talked about heaven. I, I get it, and it's like, well, I don't know, I, I, Jesus, I just can't imagine Jesus ever wanting to send anyone to hell. Let me tell you something, that's kind of the point. That, that, that is actually the point of Christmas. That is the point of the message of the Bible. That is the gospel message. Jesus does not want anyone. He doesn't want anyone to step into the second life, step into eternity without God. No one. He wants us to step into eternity Eternal life with God, in the presence of God. Listen to what it says in John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. If you just have one verse that you want to hold on to and live by, John 3, 16, but we're going to look at it a little more in context. It says this, for God so loved the world. Someone say love the world. Now look at your neighbor and say that's you. That's you. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have. Someone say but have. But have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. God took on flesh. Christmas season, we remember that, we reflect on that. That God took on flesh. Jesus was born in a stable. Jesus was laid in a manger and, and, and as Jesus would, would grow up and, and, and become a, a child and eventually a man and, and, and it is probably around 30 he began his earthly ministry as he would now go around and he would teach us the ways of the kingdom. He would teach us how to follow after him, how to, how to pursue God in, in our lives and, and Jesus would go around and he would heal the sick and he would even raise the dead and eventually Jesus would lay down his life for us. Jesus would die on the cross for the sins of the world, satisfying the justice, the wrath of God, paying the price for our sins and on the third day, after he defeated hell and death, he rose from the dead. Hebrews 9, 27 to 28 says, And just as each person is destined to die once, you die once, and after that comes judgment. So also Christ was offered once 
for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who eagerly await him. Check. Those online will figure out what mic I have. And just as each person is destined to die once, and after that comes judgment, so also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who eagerly, who are eagerly waiting for John, the revelator, God would show him the eternal punishment and show him a little bit of what hell would be like. But God would also reveal to John, which was aligned with other prophecies and other things we read in Scripture, he would let him know this is what it's going to be like. in eternity with God. This is what it's going to be like and what it's going to look like. And I know some of us today, like we, we've had a tough life. We've had a tough year. We, we've had a, a tough whatever it might be. And, and I just want you to know that, that even in this life, like, like if our hope is just this life, like, like we really don't have much hope. I, I'm sorry. Like, like God walks with us and, and he has a future in this life. But, but ultimately, if still this life is all there is, we don't have a lot of hope. But I'm thankful today that, that your life and whatever you're going through today, that is not the end of the story. That is not the end of the Christmas story. It's not the end of the gospel message. And John the Revelator would write these words. Revelation 21 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. Like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying, or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. And all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. And I will be their God. And they will be my children. As we read about this place called heaven, eternity with God, the reason Christ Jesus came, it's a place of eternal peace, a place of eternal joy. A place with no more death. Every one of us in this room, every one of you joining online today, you've experienced the loss of someone you love. Every one of us, we, we know that separation and how that feels, but I'm telling you, there is coming a day in the life that is to come, the second life that Jesus purchased for us, where there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more weeping, that there'll be no more pain, no more sickness. You see, the second life with God will be the removal of anything 
and everything evil. Gone. 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 You see, the essence of heaven is we will spend eternity in the presence of God. No more evil. No more suffering. No more pain. No more worries. No more fears. No more frets. No more discouragement. But in the very presence of God. Someone needs to know today that your future begins now. Your future begins today. Yes, the future here in this life. But when this life is over, we can step into eternity knowing, knowing because of Jesus, we can spend eternity in the very presence of God. I hope today's talk was encouraging to you. And hey, we would love to hear from you of how God spoke to you through this talk. And again, you can message us on Facebook. Make sure to like and follow us while you're there. Hope City F10. You can reach out on our website, myhopecity.cc. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the content coming out. And we are excited to see how God is going to continually move through your life through this. Love you guys. Have a great day.